Hi, today we're going to be recapping the laws of exponents and we're going to practice using them. So first, let's go through all the different laws of exponents that we have learned. The first one is multiplying powers with the same base. When you have two powers that you're multiplying together and they have the same base, then what we're going to do is we are going to keep the base the same. So this would be something like a to the power of m times a to the power of n, where the two bases are the same as each other. We keep the base the same and we add the exponent. So that's a to the power of m plus n. And an example of that could be something like this. 2 to the power of 5 times 2 to the power of 7 is equal to 2 to the power of 12. Okay, so we have the same bases and we add the exponents because we are multiplying those powers together. So that's the first law that we learned. The next one is dividing powers with the same base. So when you're dividing powers the same base, it's a similar rule to what we had over here we are going to subtract the exponents. So when you're dividing powers of the same base, it's something like this, a to the power of m divided by a to the power of n, which could also be written like this, a to the power of m over a to the power of n, because remember, division and fractions are the same. Okay, the fraction line acts as a divide sign. That is equal to a to the power of m minus n. So when we are dividing powers of the same base, we keep the base the same and we subtract the exponents. So an example could be something like this. 5 to the power of 10 divided by 5 to the power of 4. And that gives us 5, the base stays the same, to the power of 6. We subtract the exponents. So 10 minus 4 gives us 6. Okay, the next one is raising a power to a power. So this is where you have something like this. a to the power of m in brackets to the power of n outside the brackets. And when we are raising a power to a power, what we do is we keep the base the same and we multiply the exponent. So that's a to the power of m times n. Okay, so for example, you could have something like this. 3 to the power of 6 in brackets to the power of 10 outside the brackets and that would be equal to 3, we keep the base the same, to the power of 6 times 10 is 60. Okay, then our next one is raising a product to a power. So this would be something, or the, our rule here is a times b to the power of m. So we have a product. So we have a product which is made up of things that will be multiplied together. There's no pluses or minuses here. You can also have a fraction inside here and it will, the rule will apply the same. So we have a product inside to, and we have a power outside the brackets. Then each of the factors of that product are going to receive that exponent. We're going to use this rule that we had over here, which you can't see, this rule that we had over here, we're going to use that rule and apply it to each factor inside the brackets. So this gives us a to the power of m times b to the power of m. If there was something inside here, we would multiply it by the m. So an example of this could be something like, 2 to the power or 3 to the power of 2 times 5 to the power of 7 in brackets to the power of 4 and then we would take this exponent and apply it to each factor inside the bracket so it's 3 to the power of 2 times 4 is 3 to the power of 8 times 5 to the power of 7 times 4 is 5 to the power of 28. Okay so we take each of the factors inside the bracket and we apply the rule that is, or the exponent that's out of the bracket to each one using the, the rule that we had over here which was raising a power to a power. Okay. Right, then the next one we have is finding the root of a power. So for this one it looks like this, our rule looks like this. 
if you're finding the nth root of a to the power of m. Then our rule is that the base stays the same, so it stays a, whatever that base is, it stays the same. And we take the exponent of a, and we divide it by the index of the root. Okay, so we take the m and divide it by n, or it can be written like this, a to the power of m divided by n. Okay, so an example of that could be something like this. The fifth root of 7 to the power of 20. Okay, so I'm going to take this, I'm going to keep the base the same, and I take the exponent and I divide it by the uh, root, by the root's index. And that gives me 20 divided by 5 is 4. Okay, so that's what we had for that rule. And then the last one that we just did was power of a zero, or a power has a zero exponent. Okay, so this is something like this. We have a to the power of zero. And that is equal to one. But this is provided that a is not equal to zero. Okay. So if the base is non-zero, so in other words, if the base is not equal to zero, then the power, if the exponent is zero, the power is equal to one. If the base is zero, then remember that it is undefined. Okay, so that an example of that could be something like this. We have three to the power of zero, that gives us one. Okay, and just so you also have this, zero to the power of zero, is undefined. Okay, so those are all of the the laws that we have learned up into up to this point. Now, some of these laws, particularly the first two that we did, so these ones over here, we had multiplication of powers with the same base. Um, we added the exponents and dividing powers with the same base, we subtract the exponents. But these are dependent on the bases being the same. So sometimes we need to manipulate bases to make them the same so that we can actually use these rules because otherwise we, we can't always use the rules. Okay, so let's have a look at how we can do this. The first example that I'm going to do with you is this one over here. We've got 2 to the power of 7. times 3 to the power of 6 over 6 to the power of 4. And we need to simplify this. Now we have a problem because none of these have like bases. And so using the rules that we have learned up to, the, up to this point, I can't really do anything if I don't manipulate any bases here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, I know that 6 is actually the same as 2 times 3. So I'm going to change the 6 to 2 times 3. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to say this is 2 to the power of 7 times 3 to the power of 6 over 6 is 2 times 3. Now it has to go in brackets because the 6 is to the power of 4. So I can't put the 2 times 3 not in brackets because then I would just be saying 3 to the power of 4 and the 2 wouldn't have the power of 4. So the whole thing has to be in brackets to the power of 4. And that means that this whole base has got the power of 4 because 6, the whole 6 had the power of 4. And now I'm going to use the rules that I have learned. Okay, so my rules are that first of all, I've got over here a power of a product. So I need to take this exponent and apply it to each of the factors inside that those brackets over there. So the 2 to the power of 7 and the 3 to the power of 6 for now are not going to change. And over here I'm going to change this, I'm going to get rid of those brackets because I don't want them there anymore, and I'm going to change this to 2 to the power of 4 times 3 to the power of 4 because when I have got a a product that I'm raising to a power, I take that power and I apply it to each of the factors inside the bracket. 
So the 2 gets the power of 4 and the 3 also gets the power of 4. And now I'm going to go and simplify by dividing the powers that have the same bases. So the 2 to the power of 7 divided by 2 to the power of 4 is 2 to the power of 7 minus 4 is 3. Now I can use that rule. I couldn't before because I didn't have any bases that were the same. But now I do. So I can use that rule now times 3 to the power of 6 divided by 3 to the power of 4. Again, I can use the rule because they have the same base and I can subtract the exponent. So 6 minus 4 is 2. And that gives me 2 to the power of 3 times 3 to the power of 2. Now, I want you to have a look at this um, instruction over here. It says simplify leaving it in exponential form if necessary. Okay, so now all of the examples we've been doing up until this point in this section, I've just told you to leave it in exponential form all the time. But you don't always need to leave it in exponential form. Sometimes you can actually change it. If a number is, would be still a reasonable number to write down, when you change it to standard form, then we do change it. Okay, so over here, it's not necessary to leave this in exponential form because 2 cubed is just 8. It's not a massive number. 3 squared is just 9. If the powers that you're working with are ones that you should know, so things like 2 cubed, 3 squared, 4 squared, and so on, those are ones that you should know, then you change them back. Okay, so 2 cubed is 8 times 3 squared, which is 9, and that I can simplify, and that gives me 72. So this whole thing over here, is equal to 72. Okay, so let's just quickly go through some of the uh, powers that you should know, ones that you should change if you do get them. Okay, so your basic ones like 2 squared equals 4. That one is one that you would always change. 2 to the power of 3 is equal to 8. 2 to the power of 4 is equal to 16. Again, it's one that you should know and you should be able to change without having to um, use your calculator or anything. 2 to the power of 5, this is another one that is important to learn because it comes up quite a lot, is 32. And 2 to the power of 6 is 64. And 2 to the power of 7 is 128. These last two you don't necessarily have to know as much, but the first ones over here, you should know those. Okay, so you need to try and learn those. Then we've got the 3s. So we've got 3 to the power of 2 is 9, and 3 to the power of 3 is 27 and 3 to the power of 4 is 81. Those are the ones that you kind of need to know. Okay, then uh, 4 squared is 16, 4 cubed is 64. Okay, also ones that you should know. 5 squared is 25, then the rest of them is basically only the squares that we have to worry about them. So 5 squared, 6 squared is 36, 7 squared is 49, 8 squared is 64, 9 squared is 81, 10 squared is 100. Okay, so these are kind of the ones that you should know. Okay, and these ones, depending on what else is in the question, but these ones are kind of ones that you should change back. If you do get something like this and, you, and you're not told explicitly to leave it in exponential form, then you should change them back. Okay, so those are just ones that you need to be aware of. Right, now, back to what we did over here, where we took the 6 and we changed it to 2 times 3. What I was doing here is I was changing this and I was writing it as a product of its prime factors. If you look over here, the 2 and 3 are prime numbers. 6 is equal to 2 times 3. I was writing that as a product of its prime factors. Now, you're not always necessarily going to use prime factors when you're manipulating bases like this, but they often are the ones that you would use. So it is helpful to know how to write things, just small numbers without having to worry about using a ladder every time. Um, that you can write as product, product of their prime factors so that you would then be able to manipulate bases like we did over here so that you can use the exponential rules together. So the next thing you're going to do over here is you are going to fill in in, this ta in these tables over here 
each of these numbers written as product of their prime factors, the first two have been done for you. So 4 is the same as 2 squared. 6 is the same as 2 times 3. Okay, so I want you now to take all of the rest of these numbers in these tables and I want you to write them as products of their prime factors. And I'm going to give you five minutes to work on this.
Okay, hopefully you're done with that example, so all those tables. So let's go through each of those now. So 8, you should have got, is 2 to the power of 3. Then you should have found that 9 is 3 squared. 10 is 2 times 5. 12 is 4 times 3, and 4 is 2 squared. So that is 2 squared times 3. 14 is 2 times 7. 15 is 3 times 5. 16 is 2 to the power of 4. 18 is 2 times 9, which is 3 squared. So 2 times 3 squared. 20 is 2 squared times 5 because it's 4 times 5, so 2 squared times 5. 21 is 3 times 7. 22 is 2 times 11. 24 is 8, which is 2 cubed, times 3. 25 is 5 squared. 27 is 3 cubed. 32 is 2 to the power of 5. 36 is 4 times uh, 9, or 6 times 6, either way, but it, gives, it ends up giving you 2 squared. 4 is 2 squared times 9, which is 3 squared. Okay? 40 is 8 times 5, which is 2 cubed times 5. 49 is 7 squared. And 50 is 2 times 25, which is 2 times 5 squared. Then 64 is 2 to the power of 6. 75 is 3 times 25, which is 3 times 5 squared. 81 is 3 to the power of 4. 100 is 2 squared times 5 squared. 121 is 11 squared. 125 is 5 cubed. And finally, 144 is 2 to the power of 4 times 3 squared. So that's what you should have got for each of those in this table. Now, it is helpful to know how to write these numbers as products with prime factors pretty quickly and easily. So it helps if you do kind of get used to them and, and learn them without having to actually work it out every single time. And remember, whenever you are writing a number as a product with prime factors where you're changing the base of a power, you have to write it in brackets because the power... Um, because the exponent has to be applied to the whole base, which consists of everything that you're changing that number, to, that base to. Okay, so you need to be careful when you're changing the base of a power, where you're manipulating the base to change it to other numbers that work with the rest of the, the powers in your question, you need to make sure that you change when you change the base um, to a product of its prime factors, you need to write it in brackets. Okay, so now let's go and have a look at an example. So in this example, you've got 2 cubed times 4 to the power of 6 times 8 to the power of 5. I'm going to give you one minute to work on this.
Right, let's go through that example. So in question A, we had 2 cubed times 4 to the power of 6 times 8 to the power of 5. The first thing we have to do is we see none of these have got the same base. So I need to manipulate these bases. And fortunately, all of them are powers of 2. Okay, so over here, I've got 2 to the power of 3. 4, I can change to 2 squared. So this is times 2 squared to the power of 6. And remember, I have to put that in brackets, okay? Times 8 is the same as 2 cubed. So 2 cubed in brackets to the power of 5. And now I'm going to go and get rid of those brackets by raising powers to power. So this is 2 cubed times 2 to the power of 6 squared is 2 to the power of 2 times 6, which is 12, times 2 to the power of 3 times 5 is 15. And now I can combine all of them because now they all have the same base of 2. So I'm multiplying them together so I can add the exponent. So I keep the base the same. So that's equal to 2 to the power of 3 plus 12 is 15 plus another 15 is 30. So for question A, you should get 2 to the power of 30. Right, now you're going to go on to question B. And I'm going to give you one minute to work on this one as well. Okay, so let's go through that example. So in question B, we have got the square root of 2 cubed to the power of 4 times 3 to the power of 4 squared times the square root of 6 squared to the power of 5. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to get rid of my brackets inside there by raising powers to powers. And this is going to give me the square root of 2 to the power of 12 times 3 to the power of 8 times. Then I've got the square root of 6 to the power of 10. Okay. And now we're going to get rid of our square roots. And our rule says that when we are taking the root of a power, we take the exponent and we divide it by the roots index. Now, in this case, you can't see the index of the root because it's a, a square root, so it's a 2. So I'm going to divide by 2. So I've got 12 to the power of 6, I mean 12, 2 to the power of 12 divided by 2, which is 6, times 3 to the power of 8 divided by 2, which is 4, times 6, also, this is also the square root, so 6 to the power of 10 divided by 2, which is 5. Okay, so now I've got a problem because I don't have anything that has the same basis. So I'm going to change the 6 to a 2 times 3. In brackets, 2 times 3 to the power of 5. Okay, I'm running out of space over here. So I'm going to carry on on the next page. Let me just put this over here so you can see it. Okay, so that's where we are at the moment. Okay, so now I'm going to carry on from there. And that gives me 2 to the power of 6 
times 3 to the power of 4 times, now I'm going to take this exponent and apply it to each of the factors inside the bracket here. So that's 2 to the power of 5 times 3 to the power of 5. And now I can take the things that have the same basis, the powers with the same basis, and add their exponents because I'm multiplying. So that's going to be 2 to the power of 6 plus 5 is 11 times 3 to the power of 4 plus 5 is 9. And that's what you should have got for question B. Now, for this one over here, 2 to the power of 11 and 3 to the power of 9, neither of those are really reasonable to change to standard notation. So I'm not going to change those, just like I also didn't for 2 to the power of 30, that also it's not a reasonable number to change back to standard notation. Okay, now we're going to go on to question C. So in question C, you have got 10 to the power of 8 in brackets to the power of 5 times 5 to the power of 6 in brackets to the power of 0 over the square root of 20 to the power of 4 times 10 cubed, all in brackets to the power of 6. And I'm going to give you three minutes to work on this example. Okay, so let's go through that example. So in question C here, we had at the top 10 to the power of 8 in brackets to the power of 5. So I'm going to change that to 10 to the power of 5 times 8 times 5 is 40 times 5 to the power of 6 in brackets to the power of 0 is 1 over. Now at the bottom of the fraction over here, there's more than one way of actually doing this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to sort out this root first. You can see over here I've got the square root of something 
to the power of 6. Okay, so I'm going to treat it as this is all one base. I'll worry about that base later on. For now, I'm going to say when my rule says that when I have a root of a power, that the base stays the same. So that 20 to the power of 4 times 10 to the power of 3, that's going to stay the same. And I take the exponent and I divide it by the roots index. So this is going to be 20 to the power of 4 times 10 to the power of 3. That is the base. It stays the same. And I divide the, in, the root or the, the exponent by the roots index. So it's 6 divided by 2 is 3. So that's what I've got at the bottom of my fraction in my denominator. So now let's go and simplify what we have left. Okay, so I've got 10 to the power of 40 at the top. I don't need to worry about that one. I can drop it now because there's nothing else up there to worry about. And because when I multiply by 1, it stays the same. Okay, over 20 to the power of 4 times 3 is 20 to the power of 12 times 10 to the power of 3 times 3 is 9. Okay, so now in this one over here, once I've got to this stage, I can simplify these, but you'll see over here I've got a 20. Now, in this case over here, I am going to take this 20 and I can see straight away that 10 is a factor of 20. So I can actually work with this 20 with the 10s, but I need to change bases over here. I need to manipulate these bases. Also, I'm not just going to change it to 10, okay? Because if I just change it to 10, then I'm going to end up with um, 2 times 10, and 2 also goes into 10. So I'm going to change it rather to factors of 5 and 2, um, because then I'll, I'll be getting it down as small as I can. Okay, so I'm going to change this. The 10 is 2 times 5 to the power of 40 over 20 is 2 squared times 5 to the power of 12 times, this 10 is also 2 times 5, but it's to the power of 9. Okay, so now I'm going to get rid of all of those brackets again. That get, that's going to give me 2 to the power of 40 times 5 to the power of 40 over 2 to the power of 24 times 5 to the power of 12 times 2 to the power of 9 times 5 to the power of 9. So that's what you should get at the top and the bottom of the fraction when you've changed everything to 2s and 5s. Okay, so now let's go and simplify the top. Actually, the top is already simplified. I can't do anything else with that for now. But let's simplify the bottom. So I just have one power with a base of 2 and one power with a base of 5 at the bottom. So I've got 2 to the power of 24 times 2 to the power of 9 is 2 to the power of 33 times 5 to the power of 12 times 5 to the power of 9 is 5 to the power of 21. And now I'm going to go and subtract the exponents because I can divide now the powers that have the same basis. So that's going to be 2 to the power of 40 divided by 2 to the power of 33 is 2 to the power of 40 minus 33 is 7 times 5 to the power of 40 minus 21 is 19. So for question C, you should have got 2 to the power of 7 times 5 to the power of 19. Neither of those is reasonable to change to standard notation, so we're going to leave them as they are. Okay, next one. Question D. Here you've got 8 cubed to the power of 5 times negative 4 squared to the power of 3. For this one, I'm going to give you 2 minutes to work on it.
and I'm going to give you two minutes to work on this one. Okay, let's go through that example. So in this one, we had 8 cubed to the power of 5 times negative 4 squared cubed. Okay, so first of all, the 8 cubed to the power of 5, that gives me 8 to the power of 3 times 5 is 15 times negative 4 squared to the power of 3. It stays negative because that's an odd exponent, so it's negative 4 to the power of 2 times 3 is 6. Okay, so now I'm going to multiply these together, but in order to do that, I have to have the same bases, okay, or I have to have the same bases to be able to actually work with them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to 2 cubed, and the 4 to 2 squared. And now I'm going to get rid of those brackets again, so that's 2 to the power of 3 times 15 is 45 times negative 2 to the power of 6, 2 times 6 is 12. Okay, so now I've got a positive times a negative, that gives me a negative answer. The base is going to stay the same, and now I've got 45 plus 12 gives me 57. So for question D, you should have got negative 2 to the power of 57. Okay, next one, question E. Okay, here you've got 4 cubed squared times 6 to the power of 4 cubed over 2 cubed to the power of 6 times 3 squared to the power of 5, and all of that is in brackets to the power of 4. Okay, I'm going to give you three minutes to work on this one.
Okay, so let's go through that example. So in question E, we had 4 cubed squared first to work to worry about. Okay, so 4 cubed squared is 4 to the power of 6 times. 6 to the power of 4 cubed is 6 to the power of 12 over 2 cubed to the power of 6 is 2 to the power of 18 times 3 to the power of 2 to the power of 5 is 3 to the power of 10. Okay, and all of that is in brackets to the power of 4. Right, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change all of these to 2s and 3s. Okay, so I'm going to change this, the 4, to 2 squared. It must be in brackets to the power of 6 times. The 6 is 2 times 3. to the power of 12, and again that must be in brackets, over, these ones are already 2 and 3 so I don't have to do anything with them, so they just stay as they are for now, and all of that again is in brackets to the power of 4, okay, now I'm going to go and get rid of these brackets over here, so that's going to be 2 to the power of 12 times 2 to the power of 12 times 3 to the power of 12 over 2 to the power of 18 times 3 to the power of 10. Now I'm going to simply, oh and this is to the power of 4. Now I'm going to simplify the top of my fraction, that is 2 to the power of 24 times 3 to the power of 12 over 2 to the power of 18 times 3 to the power of 10. Now you can actually skip that step and go straight to the next step if you are confident by just adding those and then subtracting the 18. Okay, but 24 minus 18 is 6, so this is 2 to the power of 6, and then 12 minus 10 is 2, so that's times 3 to the power of 2, and that is to the power of 4. Okay, and now I'm going to raise those both to the power of 4, that gives me 2 to the power of 6 times 4 is 24, times 3 to the power of 2 times 4 which is 8. So that's what you should have got for question E. 2 to the power of 24 times 3 to the power of 8. Okay, and then the last one that we're going to do is question F. So in this question, you've got 15 to the power of 8 in brackets to the power of 0 times 6 to the power of 6 in brackets to the power of 4 all over 9 to the power of 6 times 2 to the power of 2 in brackets to the power of 2. Okay, so I'm going to give you 3 minutes to work on this one.
Okay, so let's go through that question. So here we've got five to the power, 15 to the power of 8 in brackets to the power of 0. That gives us 1 times 6 to the power of 6 in brackets to the power of 4 is 6 to the power of 6 times 4 is 24 over 9 to the power of 6 squared is 9 to the power of 12 times 2 to the power of 2 squared is 2 to the power of 4. Okay, so now I'm going to take those and I see I've got over here the 6 can be broken up into 2 and 3. The 9 can be broken up into 3 squared or written rewritten as 3 squared and the 2 is going to stay 2. The 1 I'm, I can leave out now. So I'm going to change the 6 to 2 times 3 to the power of 24. over the 9 I'm going to change to 3 squared to the power of 12. Now remember whenever we are changing bases like this we have to always write it in brackets times 2 to the power of 4 is going to stay as it is. It's already written as a product of its prime factors. Okay so now I'm going to go and rewrite each of these or now I'm going to go and drop those brackets rather. So that's going to be 2 to the power of 24 times 3 to the power of 24 over 3 to the power of 24 because 2 times 12 is 24 times 2 to the power of 4. Okay, so now let's have a look at our 2's. I've got 2 to the power of 24 divided by 2 to the power of 4. If I am dividing things with the same base, I keep the base the same and subtract the exponent. So 24 minus 4 is 20. So that's 2 to the power of 20. And then over here, I've got 3 to the power of 24 divided by 3 to the power of 24. They are exactly the same. So I can just cancel them out. That goes in there once, that goes in there once, and I don't have to write it down at all. So that is going to just be times uh, 1. I could also have looked at it like this, and I could have said, well, 24 minus 24 is 0. That gives me 3 to the power of 0, which is 1. Okay, so that gives me 2 to the power of 20 as my final answer for that question. Okay, I just want to quickly show you, when you are doing questions like this, sometimes it doesn't make sense to change things to products of the prime factors. For instance, if you had something like uh, 4 to the power of 3 times 12 to the power of 2. Okay, now in this example, 4 is not a product of its prime factors. Okay, it's not written as a product of its prime factors. It's not a prime number already. Neither is 12. However, I don't need to change this to 2's because 4 is a factor of 12 and there's nothing else that has um, just 2 as a factor or that is just 2. So I can take this and I can write it as 4 cubed times 4 times 3 to the power of 2. That gives me 4 cubed times 4 squared times 3 squared and then I can combine those. So even though I didn't change it to a product of prime factors, even though I'm not working with prime numbers only here, I can still simplify it together. So that gives me 4 to the power of 5 times 3 to the power of 2. Another example would be if you had something like this, 3 to the power of 2 times 4 to the power of 5 times 3 to the power of 7 times 4 to the power of 8. Okay, now in this case over here, I'm not going to worry at all about changing the 4 to anything because if you look at it, 3 and 4 do not share any common factors. So I, no matter what I change the, two, the 4 to, if I change it to 2 squared, it's still not going to allow me to work with those together. I'm still not going to be able to combine them into one power. So I don't need to. I can combine these into one power without changing the base. So I can combine these into one power by saying 3 to the power of 2 plus 7 is 9 times 4 to the power of 5 plus 8 is 13 and then I can just leave it like that. I don't need to worry about changing this to a 2 because I don't need it for combining it with any other power. Okay, so that is how we work with all of the laws of exponents. 
Now that we've learned the concepts in this lesson, it's important to practice, practice, practice. If you haven't already got the worksheet that goes with this video, you can find it by clicking on the link in the description below. The worksheet comes with an extra exercise full of questions for you to work on to master the concepts covered in this lesson. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button so that others can benefit from it too. Also be sure to subscribe so that you can easily find my other lessons and hit the bell so that you will get notified about lessons as I upload them.